you for that clarification. I'm just wondering, do I have to stand up the whole time I'm talking? I, I hope not. Good. All right. Good. What a relief. All right. Uh, next up, uh, we have Representative Pettit here in the room with us today. Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, no further comments. Let's uh, move forward with the business ASAP. Thank you, sir. I like your attitude. Good. Um, let's see. Do we have Senator Wong? I, I, I know uh, Senator Summers is voting in another committee currently. She will be here in the room, but isn't currently. Uh, is Senator Wong here with any comments? It's more complicated. I got to look around the room. I got to look on the, the Zoom. Find out what's going on. So um, I think we're good to go. Um, we have today 11 bills for consideration to JF out of committee. Um, what we'll do is rather than assume we're going to vote them all en masse, I will uh, go quickly through the bills and encourage questions. So if there are issues with some of the bills, we can identify those pretty quickly and perhaps not put them in, onto a consent uh, vote. The first bill on the list is Senate Bill 89, an act concerning surgical smoke. As you recall from the hearing, we had a lot of uh, hearing information on that. Um, we are JFSing this to the floor. Um, I believe it's just a, a, some slight changes, nothing consequential. Um, the real concern most of us have is making sure that the surgeons and the suites actually take advantage of the equipment that's been provided them. Are there any questions or comments on this bill? So move. I didn't. I have a, I have a question. Up oh, there. We go. I had only asked for questions. I didn't even ask for a motion. So let's go to Representative Zupkis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just have one question. I think um, in this language, uh, in this bill, what um, there was a change as far as certain um, industries, for lack of a better word, like gastro or um, cataract surgeries that were excluded from that bill. Is this correct? Uh, Representative Zupkis, I have been advised that this might my long time here in the legislature, I violated one of the rules. We have to actually have a motion in a second before we can start conversation. Okay. So okay. I'll, I'll answer your question after we have a motion in a second. Great. So moved. So moved. I hear a, a motion. I, it's hard to figure out who's doing it, but- Peter Tersiak. And seconded by Representative Carpino. To answer your question, Representative Zupkis, that's precisely the change is that we have uh, exempted the two specialty areas which were not appropriate because the uh, smoke that would be generated could not be captured by this equipment anyway. So I think that we precisely resolved the issue that, that was raised during the hearing. So they, um, I mean, I'm gonna vote for this bill. It just is interesting to me that we would exclude anyone because if someone doesn't produce the smoke, then the bill wouldn't pertain to them. So I hope that's the case because I have seen it ha happen other ways uh, in this building. So um, I just don't understand why we would have to exclude someone from this if they don't produce any surgical smoke. Actually, to, to clarify, it isn't that they don't produce surgical smoke. My understanding is they may produce smoke within the body cavity rather than external and that is, it is uh, dealt with, captured, uh, taken care of via a different type of equipment. Uh, Senator Amar, did you want to weigh in on this? Uh, yes, uh, uh, you, you're pretty uh, accurate, uh, uh, Representative Steinberg. I think the rationale is that when somebody has an endoscopy or colonoscopy and, and a polyp is being removed in a colonoscopy or a bleeding artery is uh, getting uh, fixed or, or um, uh, burnt, if you will, in the uh, stomach. Um, the the scope itself has the capacity to suck the uh, the smoke out at that point. So having another machine is not necessary in those uh, situations, and because it's inside the cavity, we don't want to add a machine inside the cavity from that perspective. And for the eyes, it would cause more harm, and that's why those things were because of technical reasons rather than giving a break to any part of the, the process. Thank you for okay. the question for clarification Thank too. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Really, to answer your question, Representative, which is a good one, we we consulted with the with the specialists in this area, and uh, there seems to be consensus. This is the best way to handle it. Okay. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions with regard to this bill? We will keep moving. Uh, Senate Bill 249. Can we? Can I keep moving after we've had a motion? Oh, is that a suggestion, Representative Ryan? Um, it Second. Projects, uh, perhaps we can begin a consent calendar. So move. Moved and seconded. Senator on one. Second. Uh, Madam Administrator, we will move uh, Senate Bill 89 to the consent calendar. Okay, we're getting the rhythm here. That's good. Senate Bill 249, an act implementing the recommendations of the Breast Health and Breast Cancer Awareness Working Group. Moved so and moved. seconded. This is a straight JF to the floor. We heard some very good testimony on this. Uh, uh, it, if anybody has any questions or comments. Oh, thank you. I see uh, Representative Dauphiné, I believe. Yes, thank you, um, Representative. I had, my question is, could you just clarify how the priority is made with regard to the minority groups and is it specific to education and or um, visits um, appointments? If I understand you correctly, Representative, you, you want clarification as to what the language means with regard to uh, dealing with uh, uh, disparities? Yeah, it's, it sounded like there was a um, going to be a priority with um, particular minority groups. And I just wondered how that would look. Is that um, w with regard to education? Is it regard with regard to appointments? Is it with regard to, um, we all obviously have, um, disparities with income among groups how you know if you could just describe that a little bit more for me um you know there are any number of instances within the statutes that we talk about uh how we help uh people with disabilities giving preference uh it's true in a lot of the legislation we've done so i don't think it's necessarily going outside of this sort of standard practice uh, if you wouldn't mind i'm going to ask Representative Gilchrist, perhaps she can give you a more de uh, definitive answer. Representative. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so with regards to the education and outreach, there would be a priority for black women and young women based on data that has been, was presented to the Breast Cancer Working Group and data we have in the state about um, the rates at which those women experience breast cancer. When it comes to um, the services themselves, it's based on income. Okay, so um, priority would go to the particular um, uh, race groups or minority groups and appointments would be economical, you would be looking at. Correct, that is my understanding. Okay, thank you for clarifying, I appreciate it. So uh, any additional questions, Representative Dauphiné, or that's it? No, that was it, thank you. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Would the committee be amenable to adding this to the consent calendar? Do we have a motion? Moved, second. Moved and seconded. This will be added to the consent calendar. Moving to item three on today's agenda, Senate Bill 255, an act concerning flame retardants. Do I have a motion? Come on, get somebody. So moved. Move. Okay. Seconded by Senator Anwar, if I have that correct. Uh, we heard a fair bit of testimony on this. Uh, this is predicated on a recent bill that passed in Maryland. A number of states have adopted these regulations. Uh, Representative Zupkis, you have a question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a couple of questions. So um, I have heard that uh, DCP is opposed to this bill and they are the ones that are going to be, I guess, overseeing it and creating these uh, fines, if you will. How are they going to do that? My understanding is they have concerns precisely along the lines that you described based on their testimony. Uh, it's our hope that we can work out those concerns to conform to the way the DCP typically oversees products in this category. 
Uh, currently, DCP does have purview over a number of different uh, products and their safety. So I think it's simply a matter, I'm hoping it's simply a matter of working out some of the, the language and details such that they feel that they have the direction they require to implement it appropriately. And thank you. And my second question is, this is in regards to putting labels uh, on furniture and, and as such. So um, this is going, we are going, Connecticut is going to require companies to ship everywhere. They can ship anywhere in the country, but yet when they ship to Connecticut, they will have to put a label on. Um, so to me, that is a little bit of a hardship on companies because overall, if other states are agreeing, because these are all federally regulated, these chemicals, we know that, um, that is just a hardship that is not necessary um, for this type of um, products. And I guess I had one other, that was a comment. My other question back to um, the DCP, um, they are going, since these chemicals are regulated, DCP is going to have to test these chemicals on their own to determine which ones they deem that are not fit to come uh, to Connecticut. Understanding of what we're asking them to do. Uh, they don't have a, a they ha have a regulatory requirement, not a testing requirement in, in this regard. Okay. Well, um, and it, I would also respond to your comment, if I might, uh, sure. you raise a good point. This is actually a JFS. I, I, I wasn't clear about this explicitly because we are trying to maintain conformance with the federal regulations where we can. And for example, the, the change in the language addresses the uh, labeling of mattresses, which apparently already has federal labeling requirements. So rather than add a second label to these mattresses, we're going to exempt that category. Uh, the point you're making, though, is a broader one, which I think we should at least acknowledge, that whenever a state seeks to regulate an industry or a product um, that is often also regulated on a federal level, there is the risk of, of uh, nonconformity. There are issues of, of federal preemption. Um, um, but as often the case, it's the states that initially regulate products in some ways. And when we reach a kind of critical mass of states doing something like this, that's often when the feds make their changes as well. So we are not alone here. We are following the lead of any number of other states. We are being sensitive to not be in conflict with federal requirements, such as we are making those changes for mattresses. Uh, and uh, we, we feel this is the appropriate time with what we know about flame retardants today, the dangers that they present to be making this change. Does that answer your question? Um, I, I guess I'll take it. Thank you. Um, but just, I will be a no today and hopefully some of these things with DCP and all can be worked out. Thank you. Thank you for your generosity and willing to consider my responses. Um, are there any other questions or comments. We're going to leave this off the consent calendar based upon Representative Zupkis's uh, indicated vote, and we will continue on and come. Mm -hmm. Motion for the roll call now. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So um, this is a JFS to the floor. Madam Administrator or Clerk, are we ready for a roll call vote? Our first experiment with roll call. <laughs> Representative Steinberg. Representative Steinberg says yes. Senator Anwar. Senator Anwar votes yes. Senator Kushner. Senator Kushner votes yes. I did not see you on screen, Senator. Could you Sorry, try? I'll, I will try it again. I there my box lit up. Thank you. Senator, Senator Kushner votes yes. Thank you. Representative Gilchrist. Representative Gilchrist votes yes. Senator Wong. Senator Summers. Representative Pettit. Our representative Pettit votes yes. 
Representative Arnone? Representative Arnone votes yes. Representative Berger Givalo? Representative Berger Givalo votes yes. Representative Betts? Representative Betts votes no. Representative Betts, I did not see you on screen, sir. <laughs> I have not lost weight. that much weight. Um, can you see me now? Yes, sir. Uh, Representative Betts votes no. Don't turn sideways. We'll, we'll use you <laughs> Representative Carpino? Representative Carpino votes yes. Representative Cook? Representative Cook votes yes. Representative Dauphiné? Representative Dauphiné votes no. Representative D'Amico? Representative D'Amico votes yes. Representative Elliott? Representative Elliott votes yes and is parked. Representative Foster? Representative Foster votes yes. Representative Jenga? Representative Jenga votes yes. Representative Green? Representative Green votes yes. Senator Haskell? Senator Haskell votes yes. Representative Cavros de Gras? Representative Cavros de Gras votes yes. Representative Kennedy? Kennedy votes no today. Representative Claritas Dietria. Representative Claritas Dietria votes yes. Representative Lenahan. Representative Lenahan votes yes. Representative McCarty. Representative McCarty votes yes. Senator Moore. Senator Moore votes yes. Representative Parker. Representative Parker votes yes. Representative Ryan. Representative Ryan votes yes. Representative Scanlon. Representative Tersiak. about that. Representative Tersiak votes yes. Thank you. Representative Young. Representative Young votes yes. Representative Zupkis. Representative Zupkis votes no. Representative Zupkis, I did not see you on screen, please. Can you see me now? Yes, I can. Representative Zupkis votes no. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Pardon me. We will be keeping the votes open till four o'clock today. So we will continue on with our agenda. Next up is item number four, House Bill 5044, an act implementing the governor's budget recommendations regarding the use of the opioid litigation proceeds. Moved and seconded, thank you. Uh, for those thank unaware, you. this is to take- I did not get the motion, Mr. Chair. I did not hear who offered Still the move. Uh, Second. Cook, I believe, who moved it. Tersiak seconds it. All right, we, we have Foster and Tersiak. Take your choice, Madam Administrator. Thank you. All right. Uh, first, let us start by uh, thanking the good work of Attorney General Tong for uh, having been a national leader in achieving the settlement uh, that has, will be bringing to the state some significant uh, settlement funds uh, related to the opioid crisis. Uh, this bill is intended to create an oversight committee of 35 members, opioid settlement advisory committee. The bill uh, explains some general guidelines for how they will operate. Uh, we know there's been a lot of testimony about everybody else who would like to be on this committee. 
this is probably something we will continue to discuss, but the uh, bones of the bill are here. And with some minor changes, we are uh, prepared to JFS it to the floor and yet continue our conversations in terms of uh, making this body uh, responsive and uh, accountable and transparent in its efforts to allocate uh, badly needed funds for a variety of opioid related pro uh, programs, <laughs> education programs, intervention programs. Uh, for those uh, on this committee are aware, we have another bill that will be dealing with specific opioid recommendations this session. This is exclusively just the settlement offer uh, uh, um, oversight committee and the rules which will guide its <laughs> deliberations. Are there any questions or comments? I see Representative Pettit, more, one, two what different ways. Go ahead. Use the microphone. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we had discussed uh, in screening uh, what initially had been uh, subsection C of section two and perhaps uh, improvements in, in the language. And I, as I believe, I think our, our discussion in, in terms of the fail safe position with the funds, we were gonna have further discussions uh, with the governor's staff to make a determination of whether or not changes in that language would be required. And I just wanted to uh, be on record as, as representing that uh, issue that we hopefully will continue discussions with the governor's uh, staff to ensure that we all are happy that the, the language suffices to ensure that the money goes to uh, the, the appropriate purposes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative, for highlighting that section. That's indeed the conversation we will uh, have with the administration. This is effectively their bill, so we wanted to honor their intent, but uh, we still intend to have further conversations to really make sure, as I said, that it is uh, as accountable and transparent, but most importantly, that it gets the, the funds to where it can do the most good. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, are there any objections to adding this to the consent calendar? Seeing uh, no objections, we will move it to the consent calendar. Next up is item five on the agenda, House Bill 5045, an act reducing lead poisoning at JFF, JF to the floor. Do we have so a motion? Moved. moved by Senator Representative Moore. Foster, seconded by Representative Pettit. Sorry, I got a bias for the people who are in the room here, so. Tennessee first. Uh, this is a bill that some of us have been waiting to do for some years. And the big difference is the governor's commitment to putting significant funds against a significant need that uh, spans a lot of the aging infrastructure we have in our state, lead paint, lead pipes. Uh, we hope we can do a lot of good with this, uh, with these funds. Uh, frankly, I wish we had even more money, but uh, we're very appreciative for the initial uh, indication in the budget that the governor intends to do something serious about this. Uh, the, the, one of the key elements in this bill is to lower the, uh, the standard, if you will, not lowering the standard, lowering the, lowering the uh, amount allowable of lead uh, indicated in samples that would be considered acceptable. And lowering it means that ideally we will capture a lot more problematic lead in the environment and be in a position to do something about it. We recognize it puts uh, added responsibility on the health districts, which already do this work, but uh, we're hoping that they will be enabled both through this legislation and adequate funding to, uh, to execute the responsibilities indicated here. They're on the front lines and we're very hopeful that we will be involved with a, uh, uh, a successful inventory of uh, what we know to be problem areas, problem uh, communities perhaps where there's a higher incidence of lead in the home or lead in the environment, which we can do something about. Um, there may be further changes to this bill, but uh, right now it meets our desire to do something consequential about lead this session. It is a significant public health issue and we're very glad that we're here to talk about it. Uh, are there any comments or questions? Is, is there any objection to adding it to the consent calendar? 
No objections, and we will add it to the consent calendar. Moving to item six on the today's agenda, House Bill 5046, an act adopting the Interstate Medical Licensure uh, Compact and Psychology Inter Jurisdictional Compact. This is a JF to the floor. Do I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Senator Summers, seconded Second. by Mr. Cook. Um, this is part of a broader effort to deal with something we've been talking about a lot in this legislature for the past couple of years. It's dealing with a broad, significant workforce shortage really across the continuum. This is dealing with simply one piece of it. You may recall that we had uh, legislation on what we call SIPAC, um, dealing with this, the psychiatrists before, and we also have the psychologists in this. I wanna stress this is only one piece of the puzzle, an important piece, but 5001, the Children's Mental Health Bill will also be dealing with, uh, with compacts. And I would argue that we have yet to even finish our work with regard to compacts. We continue to struggle to find a way to include nurses, which we know are, are critical players and a lot of the healthcare access issues we have right now. And uh, I just want to assure you that those of us who have been involved in a, a variety of these bills, 5001, SB2, this legislation, we are not yet done trying to figure out how we can uh, best address the uh, healthcare worker shortage across the state and to uh, provide adequate access. So this is not an end in itself, but it's something we've been looking forward to do for some years. This is the, obviously the support of the governor, being it's a governor's bill. And it is a, a, an important piece of a broader puzzle as we try to address, address issues of reciprocity, recruitment and retention across all the specialty areas. Are there questions or comments? Uh, I recognize Representative Betts. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to be clear, uh, not only for the public, but for myself, We've been trying to address mental illness and there's been a great deal of focus appropriately so on the children, but I don't believe we're limiting it to just children. Is that not correct? That is correct, Representative, and I think it's really important you make that point. Uh, even with this very large companion bill, uh, which we will be probably be voting out within the next week or so, uh, House Bill 5001, the title there is Children's Mental Health, but the impacts are significantly broader than that. In fact, uh, there are a number of sections of that bill as a complement to this bill, which deal with mental health for, for everyone. And uh, that's really an important distinction that we need to make. There are parts of that bill which are not explicitly, exclusively mental health. They deal with the entire healthcare landscape. So our intent is to do something serious about a group we know we've disadvantaged during the pandemic, namely children. And we know we've had a problem with children's mental health that predates the pandemic. But we also know we've had issues with mental health for everybody that predate the pandemic. And this will have benefits across the spectrum, if that answers your question, Representative. Other questions or comments? If not, is there any objection to adding this to the consent calendar? Seeing none, it will be added to the consent calendar. Moving along, item seven on today's agenda, House Bill 5119, an act permitting pharmacists to administer the influenza vaccine to children 12 years of age and older. This is a JF to the floor. Do I have a motion? So moved. moved by Senator Summers, second by Representative Ryan. This is also a bill that we've talked about in the Mr. Past. Chair, it's a JFS. You didn't see somebody, Madam and Mr. No, the bill is a JFS. The language was sent this morning. It's a there's a correction, please. My apologies. Uh, to be clear, the uh, the JFS language in this case is to correct a, a simple uh, textual error and is of no other greater consequence. So this is a JFS to the floor. I stand corrected. Uh, as I was saying, this is a bill that we've considered before. Uh, honestly, prior to the pandemic, we weren't quite sure about it. But uh, certainly our experience during the pandemic with pharmacists administering vaccines uh, in, a, in a, a, a very uh, broad scale way during the pandemic, at least in my view, 
gives me some reassurance that this is an appropriate step for us at this point in the game. Um, uh, I will uh, yield to a question from Representative Dauphiné. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just would ask that we do this at a, on a roll call vote because I will be a no. Thank you, Representative. Are there other questions or comments? Thank you. Seeing no, uh, Representative Cook. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just have one clarification clarifying question. So does this now eliminate um, pediatricians from giving these vaccinations or is this now just an option for families? I think it's very important for that to be noted publicly. Thank you for the question. Yes, by no means does this uh, take away the ability for any other party currently that has the right to administer vaccines. It's recognizing that uh, the pharmacists have, uh, in terms of the experience we have, been able to administer them safely but we fully expect that the pediatricians will remain on the front lines of administering vaccines. They are our key player in this. Uh, if that answers your question, Representative. Uh, Representative, uh, Senator Summers followed by Representative Betts. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I think it's important to recognize that, uh, did I not press I'm working. Excuse me, I had a little technical difficulty. Um, I think it's important to recognize that um, we are short staffed for pediatricians in the state of Connecticut. And at many times they are limited in their supply of the influenza vaccine. So therefore there are many times when a parent will go to a pediatrician and they don't have the vaccine to be able to give to the child. This provides another opportunity and another place where pharmacies readily stock uh, influenza vaccines where a pharmacist can safely administer a vaccine to a child who is uh, 12 years old and under. And also it requires that the um, information be transferred to the child's pediatrician. So the record is complete. And I fully support this. We've seen that we have been able to provide um, easier access and vaccines to adults. And um, I do believe children under or 18 and above at pharmacists currently through the COVID uh, pandemic uh, without any incident. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Summers. Representative Betts, followed by Representative Carpino. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I certainly support this, but I have one concern and I frankly don't know the answer. Uh, it's one thing to administer the vaccine. It's another if somebody gets a bad reaction to it. I know in a doctor's office, I'd feel pretty comfortable of that being dealt with, but what happens if you are at a CVS and uh, a child either gets one there or later on some kind of a uh, reaction to the shot that they administered. Excellent question, Representative. And I think this was really what had hung us up prior to the pandemic, that we were not sure that they had the adequate oversight in place to make sure that, uh, that uh, people who had vaccines administered would hang around for 15 minutes so they have an opportunity to observe any reactions. Again, I believe our experience, at least with the COVID vaccine, has given us some confidence that they can do so effectively. Um, we have not seen the kind of problems in that setting that we might have thought might have occurred. Uh, I agree with you, it's not quite as controlled a setting as a physician's office. But again, our experience gives us reason to believe that we can do so safely. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I said I'm supporting this, but again, uh, I'm not saying something is going to happen, but I do think the pharmacy or whoever is administering it that is not a doctor should have a plan of action in place should something go awry. Because uh, heaven forbid that happened, just because it hasn't happened now does not mean we should not have a, uh, a response prepared in the event it does happen. Thank you. I concur with your point of view on that, Representative Betts, and we can continue that conversation. Representative Carpino, followed by Representative Linehan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a question. In the event this bill passes and an individual pharmacist is not comfortable or giving these um, vaccines to a 13 or a 14 year old, could the employer force them to do so as a condition of employment? Interesting question, Representative. That has not come up in our previous conversations. Uh, I would imagine that uh, an employer would want to uh, respect the concerns by any of their employees and that conversation would take place. But I don't think there's anything in this bill that explicitly deals with that circumstance. Thank you. I will be a no then today and um, hope to, we can get that answer before it reaches us further. 
we, it's certainly something we can discuss further and work on together. Representative Linehan, followed by Representative Pettit, followed by Senator Summers. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just wanted to make a few comments on this. I originally had a concern um, with this legislation as well as uh, the pediatrician's office legislation for medical assistance. Um, and, and, and the same concern applies to both. I am hesitant to do anything which may contribute to vaccine hesitancy. Um, and so I have been asking around uh, if, if anyone believes that this would contribute to vaccine hesitancy, especially as it uh, pertains to kids. And I'm told no. So uh, I am going to support this uh, because I'm told no, that they don't believe it would contribute. However, I think it is important to note that um, if I hear something different on the floor, um, before it gets to the floor rather, I may reconsider my vote, but I think that it's important that anything that we put through regarding vaccinations and children does not um, uh, increase any vaccine hesitancy in the community. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative. Representative Pettit followed by Senator Summers. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think earlier, so the public is clear that the intention of this bill is to allow pharmacists to deliver the influenza vaccine to children 12 up to the age of 18, not un under 12. Uh, children under 12 would still need to be seen in their pediatrician's uh, office to obtain the vaccine. And I don't, I don't know that it'll completely satisfy the, the concerns of some people in terms of adverse effects, but much like uh, the uh, during, during the pandemic with COVID vaccinations, uh, Patients will be instructed, patients and their parents will be instructed on the potential uh, adverse effects that occur uh, immediately and, and over time with instructions what to do should those symptoms occur with instructions to follow up with their uh, pediatrician's office should they have uh, an adverse effect that they think is uh, significant and requires attention. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative Pettit. Senator Summers. not used to pressing the button, sorry. I wanted to um, make sure that people realize that the American um, Association of Pharmacists requires a 20 hour course in the safety of um, vaccine administration. And um, it includes um, training and supervision of those who are learning to uh, administer vaccines. And um, I am fully confident that if a healthcare provider did not feel comfortable doing something, um, maybe they don't feel confident in their scope that they would not be um, forced to be doing something that is they're not comfortable with. I, if you look at surgeons, they're not going to perform surgery that they're not comfortable with doing. Um, that would be a risk to them and to their employer. So um, I think that this bill has to be looked at as an access issue. And um, the flu vaccine before COVID, uh, the flu um, caused one of the highest death rates in the state of Connecticut during that season for elderly and sometimes young people. We've passed bills on um, ECMO machines to help um, children that have the flu vaccine. Nothing in this bill requires you to go to a pharmacist. It is just an added measure of access. And if you're more comfortable going to your pediatrician, I, by all means, that's where you should go with your child. However, I can tell you just yesterday, I received a call from a young woman whose child has, she believes a UTI infection and her, far, her pediatrician was not able to see her for four days because she's so short staffed. Um, so you can either do that with vaccines or you have this as another acceptable alternative. And I hope the committee will fully embrace this and support this going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Are there any other comments or questions with regard to this bill? I think we're gonna do a roll call vote on it. Madam Administrator. Representative Steinberg. Representative Steinberg votes yes. Senator Anwar. Senator Anwar votes yes. Senator Kushner. Senator Kushner votes yes. Representative Gilchrist. Representative Gilchrist votes yes. Senator Wong. Senator Huang votes yes. Senator Summers.
Jennifer Summers. Yes. Representative Pettit. Yes. Representative Arnone. Representative Arnone votes yes. Representative Berger Givalo. Representative Berger Givalo votes yes. Representative Betts. Representative Betts votes yes. Representative Carpino. Representative Carpino votes no. Representative Cook. Representative Cook votes yes. Representative Dauphiné. Representative Dauphiné votes no. Representative D'Amico. Representative D'Amico votes yes. Representative Elliott. Representative Elliott votes yes. Representative Foster. Representative Foster votes yes. Representative Django. Representative Django votes yes. Representative Green. Representative Green votes yes. Senator Haskell. Senator Haskell votes yes. Representative Cabris de Gras. Cabris de Gras votes yes. Could you do that for me again, Representative? Cavros de Gras votes yes. Thank you. Representative Kennedy. Kennedy votes yes. Representative Claritas Dietrich. Representative Claritas Dietria votes yes. Representative Linehan. Representative Linehan votes yes. Representative McCarty. Votes yes. Senator Moore. Senator Moore votes yes. Representative Parker. Representative Parker votes yes. Representative Ryan. Representative Ryan votes yes. Representative Ryan, can you repeat for me, please? Representative Ryan will repeat for you, yes. Representative Scanlon. Representative Terziak. Representative Terziak votes yes. Representative Young. Representative Young votes yes. Representative Zupkis. Representative Zupkis votes yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Moving to item eight on the agenda, an act establishing a rare disease council. This is a JF to the floor. Do I have a motion? Moved. moved by Senator Summers, second by Representative McCarty. Uh, the rare disease council. Uh, this is something we've talked about for a number of years. We have some incredible advocates here in the state of Connecticut who have been looking out for those with rare diseases. And this uh, would establish a permanent rare disease council, which we hope will help uh, everybody, both uh, professionals and lay people better understand the uh, types of rare diseases out there such that uh, we can assure uh, appropriate treatment and identification particularly at say emergency rooms and the like where oftentimes uh, their rare diseases are difficult to communicate and ideally also lead to uh, more programs and perhaps even uh, uh, remedies and therapies for people with rare diseases. But the first step we wanna take is to establish such a council so that they can uh, carry on with the work that has been done informally but now on a more permanent basis. Uh, I see we have a number of questions. We'll start with uh, Representative McCarty, followed by Senator Kushner. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, just very quickly, 
I noticed in the membership of the council, there's only, uh, there are few appointments for individuals that are actually experiencing rare disease. So could you just comment within the council membership if there will be other opportunities to put people through those appointments, additional people experiencing rare disease onto the council? Thank you for the question, Representative. It is indeed a point of discussion we've had with those who have, uh, who have advocated for this bill. Uh, to their credit, we had suggested that they want to keep the size of the committee modest so they can really move the ball forward. And they have resisted uh, calls to add too many more members. Yet, uh, my understanding is conversations are ongoing. Uh, even after we move this bill out of committee, we may uh, consider some uh, additions or, or switching out um, to be as representative as possible so that we have people on this group will be able to add value and offer appropriate perspective. Great, thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Kushner followed by Representative Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for allowing me to just uh, express my strong support for this. Uh, I, it's something very close to me because it was one of the first uh, things that happened when I became elected was to meet a constituent whose child has a rare disease and the importance of this and other legislation that we've passed in the past. And it's just, I think it's long overdue and I'm really pleased that we're moving it forward to this. So on behalf of my constituents, all the advocates who've reached out, I really appreciate the fact that the chairs are moving this bill along today. Thank you so much. Thank you for that, Senator. Representative Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, actually, you answered my question with the size of the committee. Um, so I do appreciate your comments on that. And then I know that there'll be more discussion on it. But then I also, uh, just if you would indulge me, I just wanna acknowledge the passionate testimony of so many people. Um, it, it really, it was still my heart, I guess I might say. Um, I um, had the opportunity to sit in on a number of meetings. And uh, it, it, as uh, Senator Kushner said, this is long overdue, it's time for this um, council to move forward. So I'm happy to support this and see it move out of committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative. Are there any other questions or comments with regards to this bill? If I, I don't see any, are there any objections to adding this to the consent calendar? Seeing none, it will be added to the consent calendar. Moving to item nine on the agenda, House Bill 5273, an act establishing a statewide stroke registry. This is a JFS. To the floor, do I have a motion? So moved. moved by Representative Pettit, seconded by Summers. Senator Summers. Senator Anwar, second. Okay. I promise you the next one, Senator. Uh, okay, um, we heard a, a fair bit of testimony on this. Um, the change that we've made is in response to that testimony. Uh, I believe regarding the enforcement actions so that uh, we've addressed the, the most significant concern that's been expressed to us. Are there any other questions or comments? Representative Betts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is, um, if we did not pass this bill, could it not be done without state statute? That's a good question, Representative. My understanding is no, it couldn't. That indeed, much of this data is actually collected by uh, our hospitals uh, and, and other acute facilities, but that uh, there is no means currently by which this data is amalgamated and analyzed in the fashion that would benefit us most if we're going to uh, address uh, risks of stroke in the target population. And a number of other states do this successfully, but there is a central point of collection and analysis of the data, which we do not have here in the state. Um, well, it'll come as no surprise to you. I'm obviously going to be voting no against this, uh, not only just because of this particular one, but it's amazing, and I think uh, not a very good statement about us, that we end up having to put things in statute that could be done without that. And I think uh, the same thing applies here. It's important, but I don't know that you need a state statute to either, one, get people to do it, or two, to have to uh, monitor on, a, on an annual basis, but I will, um, I will be voting no on this. Thank you, Representative. I will only add that uh, despite the fact we've talked about this language for a number of years, we've not been able 
to do it without legislative action. And indeed, we've held this hammer over those to say, can't there, can't there, we find a way to get this done without, and we've reached this point. Are there any other questions or comments? Uh, given Representative Betts' comments, let's uh, have a roll call then, if you don't mind, Represent uh, uh, Madam Administrator, are we ready for a roll call? Yes, we are. Representative Steinberg? Representative Steinberg votes yes. Senator Anwar? Senator Anwar votes yes. Senator Kushner? Senator Kushner. Senator Kushner votes yes. Representative Gilchrist? Representative Gilchrist votes yes. Senator Wong? Senator Summers? Senator Summers votes yes. Representative Pettit? Uh, Representative Pettit votes yes. Representative Arnone? Representative Arnone votes yes. Representative Berger Gervalo? Representative Berger Gervalo votes yes. Representative Betts? Yes, Representative Betts votes no. Representative Carpino? Representative Carpino votes yes. Representative Cook? Representative Cook votes yes. Representative Dauphiné? Representative Dauphiné votes yes. Representative D'Amico? Representative D'Amico votes yes. Representative Elliott? Representative Foster? Representative Foster votes yes. Representative Foster, I did not see you on screen, please. Representative Foster votes yes. Thank you. Representative Django? Representative Jenga votes yes. Representative Green? Representative Green votes yes. Senator Haskell? Representative Cavros de Graw? Cavros de Graw votes yes. Representative Kennedy? Representative Kennedy votes yes. Representative Claritas Dietria. Representative Claritas Dietria votes yes. Representative Lenahan. Representative Lenahan votes yes. Representative McCarthy. He votes yes. Senator Moore. Representative Parker. Representative Parker votes yes. Representative Ryan. Representative Ryan votes yes. Representative Scanlon. Representative Tersiak. Representative Young. Representative Young votes yes. Representative Zupkis. Representative Zupkis votes yes. Senator Wong. Senator Wong votes yes. Representative Elliott. Representative Elliott votes yes. Senator Haskell. Sen Senator Haskell votes yes. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Senator Moore. Representative Scanlon. Representative Tersiak. Thank you. Representative Tersiak votes yes. Senator Representative Zupkis. Thank you, Mr. Chair.
Thank you, Madam Administrator, once again, holding the votes up until four o'clock today. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Representative Betts. I just want to have the record show that I've been able to unite everybody, Republicans and Democrats alike. This is a new role for me, but I just want to acknowledge the, uh, the impact of my no vote. We like the new you, Representative Betts. Uh, Mr. Chair. Up, oh, Representative Zepkis. I thought that I voted, but then I heard my name again. Was I not recorded? No, Representative Zepkis. May I? Uh, Representative Zepkis is a yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And the vote is still open to four o'clock. Uh, moving on to the next item on the agenda, item 10. Uh, House Bill 5274, an act concerning the fee for a cremation certificate for deceased persons under the age of 18. This is a JF to the floor. Do I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Senator Summers, but seconded by? <laughs> Senator Anwar. Anwar. But, yeah. There you go. It's really challenging when we have people coming from two different directions. Um, this is a bill that we've talked about before. It's very straightforward. It exempts the $150 cremation fee, certificate fee, for the cremation of a body of a person under the age of 18. It has no significant fiscal impact, and it's something that we've sought to do for a number of years. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, any objection to adding this to our consent calendar? Seeing none, it will be added to the consent calendar, which brings us to the last item on today's agenda, House Bill 5277, an act concerning the establishment of technical standards for medical diagnostic equipment that promotes accessibility in healthcare facilities. This is a JF to the floor. Is there a motion? So moved by Representative Cook. Uh, Representative Cook got her name in, so she gets that. Uh, perhaps seconded by Senator Summers, if that's okay. Try to move the meeting along. Yeah, you know, it's because we're dragging so we, we haven't even been, been here. We've been here an hour, maybe. All right. Uh, this bill generated some very interesting testimony. Uh, I don't think uh, many of us appreciated the number of uh, instances whereby healthcare facilities have not been brought up to federal standards to, to accommodate those with disabilities. Um, this bill is really intended to conform with recently changed federal standards and does not go beyond that and is very explicit as to the types of equipment that fall under this category. So there's no fear of speculating that it will involve highly specialized equipment for which there is no uh, accessible alternative. Um, are there any questions or comments? I see Representative Gilchrist has a question. Just a comment, Mr. Chair, just want to echo that the testimony was so compelling and I really just thank the proponents of the bill for bringing this uh, issue to our attention. Thank you. Uh, thank you and I just wanna recognize Representative D'Amico for his persistence in this particular matter to the benefit of the people of the state of Connecticut. Uh, any other questions or comments? If not, my, I suggest it be added to the consent calendar. Seeing no objections, it'll be added to the consent calendar. So I do believe we are ready to vote on the consent calendar. And just to be clear, I believe we're talking items one, two, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Is that your understanding, Madam Administrator? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, point of clarification, Mr. Chair. Uh, Senator Summers, uh, Senator Anwar. Thank you, <laughs> Representative Steinberg. Uh, I'm not sure we did 11. We just did it. We just did. Okay, I was too slow again. <laughs> Senator Awo, do you just like to move something just to make sure you get to be first? Oh, okay. So we're in agreement, uh, Madam Administrator. Item one, items one, two, four, five, six, eight, ten, and eleven. I stand corrected. Eight, ten, and eleven. I'd forgotten my nine. Thank you very much. Uh, we're ready for. Uh, should we? Do, can we do a voice vote? How do you do a vote? Nope. Roll call. Can't do it. Back to roll calls. Here we go. 
Representative Steinberg? Representative Steinberg votes yes. Senator Anwar? Senator Anwar seconds, I mean, I mean, votes yes. yes. Senator Kushner? Senator Kushner, Senator Kushner votes yes. Representative Gilchrist? Representative Gilchrist votes yes. Senator Wong? Senator Wong votes yes. Senator Summers? Senator Summers votes yes. Representative Pettit? Representative Pettit votes yes. Representative Arnone? Representative Arnone votes yes. Representative Berger Givalo? Representative Berger Givalo votes yes. Representative Betts? Representative Betts votes yes. Representative Carpino? Representative Carpino votes yes. Representative Cook? Representative Cook votes yes. Representative Dauphiné? Representative Dauphiné votes yes. Representative D'Amico? Representative D'Amico votes yes. Representative Elliott? Representative Elliott votes yes. Representative Foster? Representative Foster votes yes. Representative Django. Representative Django votes yes. Representative Green. Representative Green votes yes. Senator Haskell. Senator Haskell votes yes. Representative Cavros de Gras. Cavros de Gras votes yes. Representative Kennedy. <laughs> Kennedy votes yes. Representative Claritas Dietria. Representative Claritas Dietria votes yes. Representative Lenahan. Representative Linehan votes yes. Representative McCarty. Representative McCarty votes yes. Senator Moore. Representative Parker. Representative Parker votes yes. Representative Ryan. Representative Ryan votes yes. Representative Scanlon. Representative Tersiak. Let's try again. Representative Tersiak votes yes. Representative Young. Representative Young votes yes. Representative Zupkis. Representative Zupkis votes yes. Thank you. Senator Moore. Representative Scanlon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Madam Administrator. And again, the votes will be held open to 4 p.m. Uh, that concludes our deliberations for today. Just for everyone's benefit, let's talk about next week. On Monday the 14th at 9 a.m., we will be having a public hearing on a good number of bills. That will be exclusively via Zoom. And on Wednesday, we will have a committee meeting along the lines of what we have today at 9 a.m. Yes, we're aware that the House is in session uh, later in the day, but our expectation is we can conclude our business in an hour and a half. Hopefully that will not be a problem. Uh, and then there's also the potential for a committee meeting on Friday the 18th as well, but that would be at 12.30. Uh, the Wednesday would be at nine o'clock, Friday would be at 12.30 as we are doing today. Are there any other questions? Oops, I see Senator uh, Wong. Mr. Chair. Oh, Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, did we vote on the consent calendar? 
We did. You may have missed it, but you are in a position to register. Thank you. Representative Terziak. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to suggest that we have Senator Anwar move for the end of the meeting because then he'll have one in. Uh, I think that's a wonderful idea, Representative Terziak. Uh, Thank you. I encourage Senator Ongbar to continue for hours to so, 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 so balance it out a little bit. So that's a great suggestion. Thank you, uh, yeah, yeah, Representative yeah, yeah. Terziak. Senator Ongbar, you can only recess the meeting. You cannot adjourn it. I hate to put restrictions on you now that it's your moment. Thank you so much, Mr. Co-Chair. Uh, so we will be in recess till 4 p.m. And after that, we will um, adjourn. But uh, we are going to be in recess. Thank you. I feel like I have done something. Thank you Good job. Bye-bye. Good weekends. Senator Wong, are you still there? We have Representative Ryan. Yes. Yes, ma'am. How would you like to vote, please? Uh, on the consent, yay. Yes. And I believe I need to vote on number three. And that concerning flame retardant, how do you vote? I vote yay, ma'am. I think you're all set, sir. Thank you very much. Have you're a great weekend. Thank you. Beverly, this is Julie. I think I voted on everything, but can you just confirm that? Yes, you did, Senator. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Same to you. Thanks. Madam Administrator, may I ask the same question? I believe I voted on all bills, but I've been in between meetings, so I would just like to confirm. Yes, you did. Let Thank me you so much. The content calendar. You did. Have a great weekend. Thank you. You're welcome.
Oh, all right, bye. <laughs> bye, Senator Moore. Hi, how are you? Good. I missed the consent calendar and I think something else. You missed two things. I'm looking for it right now. Okay. My place is a mess. Give me a minute. <laughs> Did you cut your hair? Hi, David. Okay. What was that, Senator? Did you cut your hair? Yes, I took it all off. I didn't know if it was in a ponytail or not. You took it no, all off. I took it all off. I kept, wow. going to, I kept going to the hairdresser and they kept just having the place too crowded and I take it off. Wow, it's nice though. Thank you. Okay, you missed the House Bill 5273 and act establishing a statewide stroke registry. Um, Senator Moore votes yes on that. And you missed the consent calendar. Do you have your agenda in front of you? I do. Okay. Uh, item number one, Senate Bill 89. Item number two, Senate Bill 249. Item number four, House Bill 5044. Item number five, 5045. Item number six, 5046. Item number eight, 5260. Item number 10, House Bill 5274. And item number 11, 5277. How I vote you? yes on the consent calendar. Thank you. All right. Have a good Thank weekend. See you on Monday. All right.
Hi, Representative Scanlon, how are you? Hi, Bev, how are you? I'm doing well. There are... First, we will start with the consent calendar. Okay. Number one, Senate Bill 89 is on the con on consent. Item number two, Senate Bill 249. Do you have the agenda with you? Um, you know what? Let me go pull it up so that way you don't have to read me all this stuff and I take the whole afternoon of your time. <laughs> Hang on one sec. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you for jumping on. Oh, no, thank you for the text. <laughs> uh, how many, did most people come in person today or no? There were, I think maybe eight, uh, maybe 10 or 11 people, in, about 10 people in the room. Okay. Uh, all right, I got the agenda up. So 89 was on consent. Yep. Number two, two Senate Bill 249. Number okay. four, House Bill 5044. Number five, House Bill 5045. Number six, House Bill 5046. Number eight, House Bill 5260. Number 10, House Bill 5274. And number 11, House Bill 5277. Okay. You're a yes? Yes. Okay, item um, House Bill number 5273, which is House Bill, no, it's number nine on the agenda. It was a roll call, an act establishing a stroke registry. And uh, was it a pretty bipartisan, a, a partisan vote or? One person voted no. Okay, I'm a yes. Thank you. Senate Bill 255, which is item number three, an act concerning flame retardant. Yes. Senate Bill 255, sorry, I did that one. House Bill 5119, permitting pharmacists to administer the influenza vaccine to children 12 years of age and older. Was that pretty contentious or no? No, it wasn't. Uh, yes. Voted no. Thank you. And um, we did House Bill 5273 already. So yep. there were three roll calls and a consent calendar. Thank All right. you. Thank yep. you. Bye. Bye. Have a good weekend. You too.